Hello and welcome everybody. This is the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode, we are going to see how you can model your brake system in order to understand it better and even improve it. For that episode, I'm really glad to have again a guest presenter on board. So, hi Mohamed from ASU Racing Team in Cairo. Yeah, hello Christoph. Hi Mohamed, thanks for joining it. So, how are you doing? Yeah, fine, thank you. Cool. Um, could you introduce yourself briefly? So, what is your role on the ASU Racing Team? Or what have you worked on over the last few weeks and years, probably? So, uh, I was a, for a former student team in Champs University in Cairo in 2014. And we have participated in Formula Student UK. Uh, and I was responsible for designing and simulation of the brake system. Perfect. And that's why we are here today. So let's move on to the agenda. So basically, similar to every episode, um, you will tell us why you did that. Um, then we will see a rather intensive um, software demonstration. At the end, we will wrap it up and talk a bit about pro and cons in our key takeaway section. Um, and the cool thing about that episode here is Mohamed has already uh, submitted a paper. It was accepted by the SAE journal. So in case you want to have a deeper look into his work, read the paper. And even better, um, all models that he has used are on the MATLAB Central file exchange. So whenever you feel that can be interesting for you, just go there, follow the link. Um, and this is also the platform where you can get in contact with Mohamed via the comment uh, functionality. So at that point, pretty cool. Thanks a lot already at that point. And now um, let me ask a question. Why did you do that brake modeling? So what, what were your main criterion? What, what was your main motivation? So uh, my main motivation during designing the brake system is that it's a curricular safety system that should be designed and modeled uh, to, be, uh, to be an accurate and efficient system. So there's a, a, perfor uh, a performance uh, deficiency that we have faced in the previous years, which is the placement of the differential or the sprocket of the vehicle uh, that's not really uh, in, in the middle of it. So uh, the vehicle uh, weight laterally is not really symmetric, mm -hmm. which would cause a vehicle a slip angle during brake test or other dynamic tests. So uh, the main purpose was to improve uh, the brake performance by solving this uh, deficiency and in order to uh, solve uh, this problem I've started using a limiter valve on each wheel so I'll be able to have the chance to control the hydraulic pressure on each wheel so it could give me uh, the chance to control the hydraulic pressure. Well perfectly makes sense and what you also mentioned to me um, there's a, another special reason why you why you want to present that why you wanted to a racing launch episode with me so let us hear about that. So 20% of the participating teams in Formula Student UK are actually coming from Egypt, mm -hmm. but most of them are participating in only class two where you present your design in just papers. But I really wanted to motivate them through this episode in order to move a further step further to, into class one and start making an actual vehicle. Well, that's a brilliant motivation. Um, helping other teams, wow, that's perfect spirit of Formula Student, great. And at that point, I'm well handing it over to you and really looking forward to the software presentation. So uh, my software uh, is really uh, implemented on Simulink uh, and is really consisted of two main parts. So uh, the first part is actually presented is this first row of blocks where you can find the main components of any brake system, uh, like for example, the brake pedal, uh, and the balance bar where you can control the brake force uh, longitudinally and the master cylinder and this is uh, the most important uh, block which is actually simulating the limiter valve or commercially named as a TCM. Mm -hmm. So uh, TCM it can be controlled uh, through uh, this spring stiffness uh, where you can control the hydraulic pressure and here in this block you can find uh, how the hydraulic pressure losses is actually simulated uh, where you, you where you have uh, some deficiencies uh, or losses like for example uh, the inclination of the brake tubes and also uh, the compression of that and other uh, volumetric losses. Mm -hmm. uh, on my second part is uh, vehicle dynamics uh, uh, that are actually or directly influenced by the brake system performance which are here presented uh, in the second row of blocks uh, where you can find uh, some important aspects of the vehicle like for example vehicle slip angle mm -hmm. and yaw rate and yaw angle and taking into account uh, the full influence of the suspension system uh, in the formula student vehicle. Okay, a um, quick question here, did you also model the tires? Yeah, actually I've modeled the tire, so uh, uh, so there's also a state space model mm -hmm. uh, here in M script 
uh, where uh, the main elastic properties of the tire are like uh, torsional stiffness and uh, the wind uh, the wind up stiffness and uh, the longitudinal stiffness okay. of the tire is simulated and uh, and during uh, a brake test uh, you have here uh, the results of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, the effect of torsional stiffness uh, on the tire uh, can here uh, really observe uh, during braking, mm -hmm. while uh, while the torsional while the torsional stiffness of the rim uh, also uh, can be observed. And um, it was implemented really in another software tool. And uh, last but not least, and the most important one is comparing the deceleration uh, theoretically and uh, and uh, this uh, si and simulated uh, with the elastic properties of the tire. So uh, at this peak, the uh, wheel starts to lock. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why we have uh, really uh, two separated uh, plots uh, is that this, this one is really uh, influenced by only the braking torque, while the other one is influenced by the tread uh, force deformation, which is uh, commonly named by the friction force uh, from the ground. Okay, perfect. Uh, and also, uh, there are uh, another important curve, uh, which is the volumetric losses. Mm -hmm. So uh, this curve represents the volumetric losses in centimeter cube on the y-axis. Uh, and uh, it is really important for me to know uh, how much fluid is going really to reach uh, the caliber uh, and to, or in order to start adjusting uh, the limiter valve uh, with the value that wouldn't really affect uh, the performance of the caliber and uh, would, that would uh, consistently uh, would cause a safety problem uh, of the vehicle. On, uh, on another hand, uh, you have uh, other main important blocks which are really here uh, colored by red, uh, which represent uh, which wheel will would start looking first. Mm -hmm. So you have in this uh, re re first red block uh, is the inner front tire road coefficient to prevent wheel lockup, and it has a value of 2.041 compared to another one, which is the inner rear wheel, uh, which has a value of 1.158, which means that the inner uh, front wheel would start looking first before the inner rear wheel. And this would mean that the inner front efficiency uh, would be uh, much lower than the inner rear wheel. Uh, so uh, this gives me a great look of how would my brake system would start to behave. Okay, well, pretty interesting. I think this is a nice overview. Uh, the model is available on Fire Exchange. Yep. Uh, feel free to have a look at it and to analyze the results. If you have any question, uh, feel free to contact me. Perfect, great, thanks a lot. To have a look inside, actually, uh, inside uh, the limiter valve or the TCM, here you can have a schematic drawing of it, so you'll be uh, really know how it uh, behaves and uh, and uh, how it would affect the performance of the brake system. Uh, while here is presented the stick slip model that I have used to characterize the elastic properties uh, of the tire, which is uh, really accurate more than uh, the column uh, uh, friction model because it takes into account uh, main important aspects of the tire, uh, like the sliding uh, friction effect of the tread. So uh, this is the most uh, fun part. So uh, this is uh, this is a, uh, the validation part. So uh, in any sim uh, in any simulation uh, model, uh, you can't really be sure uh, if this model uh, is correct or not without a physical validation of it. So uh, uh, on uh, on our side, we choose uh, an inertia dynamometer test mm -hmm. for our vehicle to start comparing the actual deceleration of the vehicle compared to uh, the simulated or uh, the uh, or the resulted uh, deceleration uh, from the Simulink model. And it was really amazing that the average uh, error result. Uh, com by comparing the, the actual deceleration and simulated deceleration was about 12%. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on another topic, really... Uh, I'm sorry, let, we... me, let me chime in at that point. So thanks for, for answering a question that I've never asked. Um, usually I always ask the validation question, so thanks for answering that. Um, seems to be that you are very good prepared. Um, the 12% variation, I would say they are not perfect, but... Um, well, Below 10% is, is good, 12% is almost good, um, but considering the complexity of the, the brake system um, with the limiter valves and also I, I guess that thermal e effects play a certain role, um, it's pretty good. Um, can you name the area where you think the, the biggest er error comes from? So if you want to reduce the 12%, so what should you do first? Actually, I would uh, think that the most uh, part would be the thermal analysis uh, bet between the, uh, the brake rotor and the pad because it wasn't really 
taken seriously. So I've just taken uh, a coefficient value that uh, the, from the manufacturer of the pad, yeah. and I've just implemented to the model. So I think this is the main error source. Okay, great, thanks. So I was interrupting you, so move on, and we have some further interesting infos, right? Yeah, uh, so uh, we have here a finite in element analysis image uh, from ANSYS. So uh, some results that uh, uh, was really uh, taken from the Simulink model mm -hmm. was used uh, for another purpose, uh, for example, to uh, start uh, designing the physical components of the brick system. And here you have uh, uh, you have an image of the balance bar, which is one of the components of the brick system mm -hmm. and a an stress analysis on it. Okay, that's a very nice example. Basically, you have used results that you got from some Simulink in order to determine the loads for a, for a finite element analysis. Um, are there any other simulation tools that you've interfaced with a MATLAB and or Simulink? Yeah, actually, I've used uh, AIM-ESAM, mm -hmm. uh, where I have simulated uh, with a more further detailed simulation of the pistons, uh, uh, of the caliber uh, and the master cylinder, and I've used the curves that I have uh, presented before, uh, which uh, which is a volumetric, uh, uh, volumetric losses curve. Okay, pretty interesting. So this is a very nice example. Um, Interfacing to other simulation tools, um, the, the previous episode of the Racing Lounge was dealing with a very, very similar topic. It was dealing with the CFD simulation results that we further processed in, in MATLAB. So again here, another very interesting example on that. Um, and I think now it's already time to, to move to our key takeaways. Um, I suggest, Mohammed, you go through them first and perhaps we, we have some open questions or points where we should discuss a bit more. Uh, so uh, my first important point is that, that the tire is the main part that starts to break the vehicle. So you have to take into account a full simulation uh, of the tire. So uh, if you if you uh, have the ability to start to modify the tire uh, characteristics, you would have an efficient braking system because uh, it is the actual component that starts to break. And also uh, on, a, on, a, on a second point is that start, uh, start to implement uh, another components to the brake system like the balance bar and the limiter valve is really interesting and give you the chance to start controlling uh, main aspects of the brake system like the hydraulic pressure but you have to be sure that you have simulated it uh, into specific because such components uh, could affect the safety of the system. Mm -hmm. And last but not least uh, is the validation. So uh, if you have not really uh, validated your model, uh, I'm pretty sure that it's not working. And that's why uh, validation of any model is really important in any design process. Perfect. Well, usually what I say, keep your, sim, uh, keep your systems as simple as possible. Um, so at the end, was it, was it a good step to go for that balancer bar and the limiter valve? So did you see the, the, the positive aspects? Made it your system actually better and safer? Actually, it made it better uh, because I had the chance to eliminate uh, such important deficiency, which is uh, slip angle. Uh, but I would say it wasn't not really easy for uh, for the, for the next team uh, for 2015 to start understanding the system uh, and to start modifying it because when you start to have a complex system it it could be uh, a little bit hard uh, for other for other teams to uh, start to modify on it. Okay, perfect. But when it comes to handing it over to the next team, you have done a brilliant job. You have published a paper. You have put all your materials on file exchange. I think on that side, really well done. Thanks a lot for presenting to us. Thanks a lot for publishing all that material. Um, and that brings us already to the end of today's episode. So let's move to the last slide, um, where I again point you to our um, contact addresses. So whenever you want to drop feedback about the Racing Lounge episode, do it to formlastudent at mathworks.com. I also um, offer to forward emails to Mohammed, no problem. Um, we have also a Facebook group where we inform you guys about our videos, about our Racing Lounge episodes, but also around uh, different, different information around Formula Student. If you want to see all episodes of the Racing Lounge, go to mathworks.com slash racing lounge. I think we are close to 40 now. We have a software offer with a big variety of toolboxes. MATLAB and Simulink are of course included. And if you do use our software, we would appreciate if you use our logo on your car and on your reports as well. So that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Mohamed, thank you again so much and hope thank to see you next time. Thank you.